Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke. Um, I, I had some follow-up questions come up to me on the X4 fi, uh, Foundation Interworlds mod video setup. Um, some really cool questions, actually. So I thought I would talk to them in this one real quick. And um, one of you had reached out and said, Hey, I think I understand what you're saying now. And that what do you recommend is a good starter plan for going, you know, start your own path kind of strategy, which is the very far farthest down uh, uh, game option in the game. Uh, and again, you could do this just in simply X4 found, uh, Foundation if you like, but Interworld is the one I like the best. Um, but um, this, all of this that I've referred to is with Interworld. So just remember that the... The rules and restrictions do change with the normal game. But anyways, he wanted to know, um, how do you learn the basics in just one system? And then how does that go forward? And I said, okay, no problem. Let's answer that question. So the first thing I, I recommend is if you do this right, if you go down and you initiate, you know, start your own roadmap or your own future, and you begin, the very first thing, it takes about an hour, maybe two hours to do this right, by the way, is at least to this point, you know how to build a base. So I'm not covering any of those basics. And you may have yourself a few bases that you saved. I do recommend that you do build bases that are optimal and save them so they're quick and easy to drop and put in play and so on. But more importantly, if you save your bases... Then when you go to play a new game and you would just want to set up your properties, um, each one being a base, of course, then you have your predefined bases and you put them in place. Now, there is the all elemental sectors in the game. Those are the purple areas. One of them is Berea. Uh, Alderaan is another one. Uh, there are others in the in the Imperial side, if you like, um, the um, Empire or ASC, which is the Ascendancy. Um, there are many more, actually. There are, I think, are roughly like 20 of them. And they basically have most, if not all, of the elements in them, but they're usually a little less than the bulk uh, uh, quantities that you would expect. Uh, so if you might come into a, a silica and an, and an ore, and they're like five stars each, but in the purple sectors, there might be two stars each. So all that means is takes a little bit more time to mine your materials but the, the super important thing about the purple sectors is that's the place you want to start because it's everything you want all of the gas elements all of the normal ore elements now with that being said um you want to create no less than three bases um two bases that will basically be your production bases. Now, I do what we, big bases. And this is where the beauty of the game starts is when you put when you put your bases in, they're automatically created, fully staffed and everything. So at that point stage, I'll pick two primary bases that have all of the resources, mining capacity and processing right there. Then what I do at that point stage is I will add a defense base preferably at the exit or two defense bases if there are two exits into the sector or three. Uh, there are a couple that have three jump points inside those particular sectors. Uh, near Naboo, I think, uh, is where I, I would say that is. But the key thing is that uh, I prefer one, but never more than two. So Alderaan or uh, Berea or, uh, or Bermora, Bermora, I think is the correct terminology. Bermora system is uh, really a good one. Um, has a lot of resources in it. But uh, I put two primary bases in there that does everything. And then I have two defense bases that also produce steel, uh, Durasteel, and also produce uh, modular prefabs. And the key thing about this is modular prefab is super, 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 super critical, and so is Durasteel. So every single one of my bases even if they're defense bases, and my ba my defense bases are brutal. They are powerful, and I've had two uh, major extra-large battle cruisers go up against mine and lose. 
So I'm comfortable with the defenses of my defense bases, but they also still produce things like water, food. Every single one of my bases make food. Every single one of them make medical supplies, water, which is crucial, uh, Durasteel, and prefabs, the, the um, modular pre prefabs. And, uh, and that's it. Stop right there. Two production bases, a defense base or two, based on how many exits you have. Now, at that point in stage, what you want to do next is bring yourself just a few large uh, miners. So if you have, I would say, two gas miners and two large ore miners, this is important. Because you have large bay um, docks, but only so many. And if you have a lot of large ships and not enough large docks, then you're spending a lot of time trying to get mine ore and the big freighter ships can't come in and get their ore. So you have to be, you have to balance this out. So usually what I do is I will do uh, gas, uh, uh, no more than three gas, no more than three ores for each base that's production based. Uh, one large uh, ore miner for the defense base and then a couple of smaller um, mid-size, specifically mid-size style uh, mining ships uh, to complement that. So with the end result is I'm going to have probably close to 10 miners running large and medium. And depending on which sector you pick, we'll change that variable a little bit. But you'll have no more than three larges and you could have 20 little ones if you want. I wouldn't because it eats your CPU time. I usually find somewhere between 8 to 10 seems to be optimal. The defense bases, I provide a, a large um, miner for that because I need ore to come in. I may have silica on that too. I need white so, you know, white for chips and so on. I'll explain that later. But the whole point is, um, how many ships you have at the beginning of the game will dictate how smoothly things will go. So with miners, you also need to have... Just a couple, I'd say no more than two or three large freighters like the Peltas. I love the Peltas. Those are such awesome ships. Um, and I like the design. You know, the Pelta freighter is a pretty awesome mil missile cruiser. But I get a couple of Peltas and then I'll get uh, the bulk uh, freighters. You know, And the bulk freighters are the best because they have 16,000 in capacity. Uh, no more than a total of eight. So I've got eight freighters one or two are large the rest are small because there's something you want to do down the road and that is you won't have to deal with this immediately in the in the current bases because they're already built but when you make new bases the very first medium-sized freighter you have needs to be given over to the building process for trade not trade for the commander but trade for building the base uh, and that allows to speed up the process of deploying your next set of bases. Now that's the secret sauce of that particular issue. And I know you don't want to hear this, but it's recommended. And that, that is no more ships with one exception. Uh, and it's just because it takes too bloody long to make these stupid things, but you pick your extra large ship, whatever ship you want, and you put it out there. One or two, no more. I use two higher harrowers. Uh, which are very large ships. I uh, use them as command centers and carriers. I just don't want to wait forever to have one of these stupid things built. Um, also be careful about the Acclimator 1s um, as freighters because they are really popular to attack. I like, like I said, the Peltas. They're pretty good. And we'll get into that in just a second. But like I said, get yourself one or two very large ships and just let them patrol. Let them fly around inside your sector to be a defensive priority or you can you can do even better with that you can actually put one of your big harrows right on top of a of the your entry point of the sector and just leave them there and they'll build experience being there and they'll cruise around and do their things the second thing is um you're gonna think to yourself well, i'm gonna defend my base yes you will but not the way you think do not put a bunch of fighters out there if you do use fighters Here's where you use them. You use your fighters, small ones, with your large ships only. 
because they're the ones that do all the heavy work. May they be freighters or miners. At that point stage, you can buy more fighters later as you grow, but don't scale a lot of ships in your sector at the beginning of the game. Because if you do, your game is going to be done pretty quick because you've just saturated your processing workloads. And um, I've, I, I even did it. I put several hundred ships in my first sector and eventually, by the time I got to 10 sectors, I was dragging. Everything was taking forever to do. So I finally said, okay, enough of that. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to keep it smart. I keep the skill sets high and the numbers low. And that really works. And then you do the thing you don't want to do. Leave it running. That's right. Walk away. Now, you might want to give your Hauer a couple of extra fighters. Just... Because, because sometimes the New Republic get, becomes pirates and it's a real pain in the butt. It happens. You just simply, you know, they get their butts kicked and they leave you alone. But like I said, you know, the ones that need protection are your freighters and your miners that are big. The medium ones, you can always go and buy more. Okay. And one other key detail here that's important about your large freighters is they get a five by five sector scan capacity, which means they can go out five sectors. They're going to explore other areas out there, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, so you want to make sure they have an armed escort of four fighters each, which would be my recommendation. So talking about that, well, we talked about the property, right? We only put a couple bases in there. We didn't make a lot of noise. We only have a few freighters and a few miners, right? And the big big ships have a little, little bit of fighter protection. And you got a couple of very expensive ships that really can't do much. Your ship, your particular ship, uh, the Virago is a great starter ship, but it can't take a beating. I also used the Raider, and it couldn't take a beating. But the Pelta, uh, it does pretty doggone good. It's it's a big ship, uh, but the Nebulum B uh, Patrol or the C is also a good ship. They're pretty fast, actually. They're slightly faster than the Peltas. Uh, are good ships for you and you only. And don't give yourself any more than two fighters. It's complicated at the beginning of the game. So just keep it simple. That's your ship. So give yourself that ship. It's fast. It's efficient. It's got plenty of, of all the things you need. Hence the population process. Now, in the population process for all of your ships, and I do tell you, listen to this video to its end before you start playing the game. Every one of your ships need to have um, the satellites, Mark IVs, and they need to have the Mark IV um, resources probes. Uh, I don't care if they're fighters. I don't care if they're tugs uh, or they're giant ships. Max them out. Get them as much as possible. Why? Simple. You can't produce them anymore. So put them in the ships, fill them up. Remember to balance it. I would say no greater than three thirds or two thirds um, satellites and one third resource probes. I usually do 50-50, to be honest with you, because I can hand them off to other ships as I run out. I can re resupply and so on. And until you build your own star base slash ship building platform, uh, which is a different discussion, by the way, um, this is all you got. So as you're bringing ships into the equation, make sure that you're putting plenty of satellites and plenty of environment pr uh, probes on your ships from the beginning. This is what I was telling you. If you do this right, it's going to take you an hour to two hours just before you can even start the game. And then you're going to spend a little bit of time on the game, making sure everything's the way you had it. And you're going to find out that you missed something. And that makes sense. That's okay. Now, with that being said, um, you have to go back and start over and redesign it all over again and make the corrections. Or you can repair and fix things. Here's the secret sauce. The last thing you want to do as you're getting close to the end of starting, you know, finishing up your configurations and so on, is you should have uh, nebula, uh, the, um, not the nebula, but the, um, the builder ships, one per each base every single time and leave it there. Uh, when it's not doing anything, make it defend the base. Or you could even tell it, hey, go get me some supplies or, you know, whatever. The point is, when you start the game and you have three bases or four bases, you're going to have four builders, one assigned to each of the individual environments. Now, 
when you, you can do this two different ways. One, you can just have all four for the first base and then you can spread them out all over the map. Uh, you can deassociate them from the base and let it go to each of the other bases. Or you can assign it a, a builder ship per base as you do them. I also produce one more extra base. Why? Well, that's easy because I need a free port. Now you ask the question, why didn't you build a free port in my sector? Well, what value is a free port in a sector that's filled full of materials? I need a free port to stop leapfrogging to other sectors. So if I'm in Alderaan, I wanna go at least one to two sectors away and build a free port. Now the cool thing is everything in my sector can reach it very quickly to build it out. There's the secret. If you do a lot of exploration at the beginning of the game and then you start putting bases in places all over the place and you just can't figure out why is it taking so long to build these ships out, I mean, to build these bases out. Well, the reason why is because you have no supply chain. This is why this tool, this is why, uh, why this game is so great at teaching people to do things logistically wise. You have to create a pipe for your materials. So as you can make everything that you can make, you got to be able to pump it out. But not only that, when you put that free port in that sector, the New Relic people are getting happy. I'm sorry, not New Relic, but the, the, um, the New Republic people are getting really happy because we have a new commerce trade. And I'm getting access to all these supplies from this one sector that's got all these resources in it and so on and so on. And the end result of that discussion is you've established a pipe, a logistical pipe. And... You take that pipe till you get to the next big sector that has a purple value. So, for instance, if you're in Alderaan and I put one or two uh, free ports in, one in Kurtz and one down in, in the ice sector below it, and then I finally get to Bormera, um, I'll put a base in there that will just mine everything out there. And now I've got myself this big logistical pipe. And then after that, I start making my way to Coruscant. So, with that being said, this is how you create the core basics of your environment. Now, the last thing I can tell you right now that's very important is you have to stop. This is what gets, this is what really defines a true person who likes the sandbox versus just a, a high speed gamer. Uh, and this is not, I mean, this is a, this can be a high speed gamer at times because you can run around inside your primary sector and in starships and fighters or whatever you want to do, or run around and do some, dis, you know, minor discoveries so you can improve your trading paths. But the whole point is you've got to at least let one day at a minimum go by to build all your stocks up before you start selling. So what do I mean? Well, in every single base, no matter what you got, Whatever you collect, whatever you produce, whatever you, you secondarily produce, may it be three tiers out or just one tier like silica wafers or water or, you know, uh, refined metals. You are have to stockpile those up. Now, this is where the fun is about the bases. As you're, you'll discover, your base will have to be probably changed. You may have to add additional resources. You may have to add another production facility into your environment and so on and so on. Mine don't. I have everything on my base and I only have to build these bases maybe one more time and I'll never build another one like it I'll use the smaller ones like free ports and defense bases to do all my other work um, why because they produce it all in the base and they're really beautiful looking you know bases um, it just took time to figure it out that's where the fun is about this so as you're doing your bases and you've got you start your game you start off everything's empty you don't really have anything and you've got to feed your people and you've got to get all the things you need to get and you've got to have the bare minimums. So the easiest way to do that is to let the game run and start parsing out all your resources, get them all lined up uh, because you've got to remember that freighters, I don't care what you got, if you assign a resource to a base, they all do defense at the very beginning. So you'll have to go into each base, break out the groups, get the freighters out of the defense mode put them into trade mode, get the miners out of the defense mode and put them into mining mode and so on and so on. I would not, at the beginning of the game, assign a, a, a trading ship to build your base because your base is done. You do have a builder sitting there and the builder 
needs to be pulled out of the defensive group too, I would, because I don't want to lose my builder in case the New Republic gets a burr up its butt and wants to take out one of my bases. I usually set him off to the side right next to the base when I want to do something. Now, if you let your base set, all of your resources will fill up and you want them fully full, filled. Why? What's the one thing you want to start producing? Small, medium, large ships, right? So, uh, or you just want to do small, medium. Like you just want to get fighters and you want tier fours. Now, this is why I said, listen to this video to the very end, because this is how I make the associations uh, to why it's so important. So here's a very important detail. When you set up your priorities, you should always max out all of your options and blueprints. Take them all. For ships, bases, uh, special items, in it, uh, select them all. Always add that, because you're about learning how to expand, not going after you know, an exotic whatever, or this or whatever, that, whatever, you know, so on. Because that, that's not the goal here. In this particular strategy, the resources that you need are your battle. Blueprints shouldn't be your battle. Expansion and growth in a non-confrontational -con way is the goal. Why? Because you can serve more uh, races and avoid conflict until the point you decide, okay, now I want to pick a fight. And that's going to be quite some time away from this. And this also explains, very important, that when it finally comes to the time for you to be able to build your build base, and that's going to be a build base means that you're going to be able to build a, some type of ship, small, medium, large, extra large, that you want to make sure that that's not an issue, blueprint-wise. If you want to add complexity to your game, then restrict some of the blueprints if you want, but you know, like ships. But you want all the other components for for base building because of what you need to do over and over and over as you expand outwards. Now, with that being said, the other thing that's very important about the configuration is your ship building bases. Now, there are two ways to go. One, you can create a third base from scratch, let all the other bases supply the supplies for it, and it will build out pretty quickly inside your sector. And it is also collecting up all the minerals and all the stuff, and it's just as powerful as any of the other mining bases. But this one is the one that's going to have a ship production base added to it. So don't, when you design your bases, prepare to be ready to do ships. Now, that's important because the alternative model you could do is you do what's called a resource in, uh, eliminated uh, starship base. And what that will do is it will create your starships, small, medium, large, extra large, but they are nothing but containers, uh, docks, large and small, as many as you can possibly get, and these huge massive container systems, and nothing else but docks. That's it. It works. It's different. When you can produce a lot of your resources from your own local ships, that's something you can do. When you're dependent on all of your bases, that's a logistical process that you need to optimize. And it takes time. So the very first thing you do when you build the base and uh, when you put the base in to build it and you've got your small fighters and your medium fighters, some people will do that. They'll just do the medium and small on the first base. And they usually attach that to one of the mining bases. That's fine. You can do that. And you know it will give you the mediums and it will give you the smalls. And you could rapidly produce you know, some things within capacity. Also, there's not a major demand on your population. So that's the other key detail. Next, when you're building your shipbuilding bases, you also have to make sure that you have the population to support manning those, those environments. And that's a trick, too, because um, as you get to large and extra large, you're going to have to have 10,000 oh, extra larges uh, in the 20s, about 23,000. And uh, you're using the main, uh, what we call the uh, freedom style um, uh, habitats. And, um, you know, that's important because you want to make sure that your bases support the nature of what you're going to try to do. <coughs> At that point stage, now you've got yourself a very large base that is nothing but production and storage. And you can do, let's say, six extra large ships and ten large and, and that's it. You know, extra large and large, that's my recommendation. 
Uh, large should, in my book, I always put large no matter what. If you've got an extra large to a large, that's it. Or I have a small, medium, large, that's it. I don't do anything else. <coughs> Secondly, put one maintenance pod on the level you pick. So if you're going to do small, medium, and large, then you'll have two pods. You'll have the maintenance for small, medium, and you'll have the maintenance for the large. If you have the extra large and the large, then you want to have the extra large maintenance facility and you want the large maintenance facility. And it's important to do that because uh, that could be the difference between you waiting three or four days for another ship to be produced versus just repairing one that would take a couple of hours. So it's always valuable to have that one repair ship, uh, I'm sorry, one ma maintenance level equivalency for whatever you're doing on your start uh, ship building facility. So at that point in stage, most people will maximize everything, get all of their values, then they're ready to set the final component. And you want to do this before you build out your, your starship bases, the ones that are going to produce ships. You want to then begin to barter. Now, you'll find that a lot of times automatic bartering is happening. So if when the availability for buy, it will sell some of your stuff. But you need to go in and actually manually lock those down. And by locking them down, you want to make sure that you can sell stuff that's surplus and you want to back it off a little bit for yourself. Now, why do I say that? Well, because of two reasons. One, the free port. The free port, once you set the buy values for the free port, will buy that stuff from you and fill up the free port. And secondly, the free port will then sell it at a higher rate to the local traffic. Hence, you've created an, an economical engine. And more importantly, you're providing a storage base that's away from your main sector that can build a couple sectors away another base. See how it works? So that leaves the last part of this. And that is, okay, I started in a single sector. I did what you said. Put everything in there, basics. My base is filled up. They have all their materials. I'm selling a little bit, keeping a little bit. I want to build my starship uh, manufacturing facilities where should i and how should i well my recommendation there first is don't do both of them in one sector don't do both of them in alderaan or in uh, bormera you need to do them in separate ones so that means you have to put a free port in and at least another main base in some other sector i.e you know, like say for instance alderaan or bormera and then when those are operational and functional, then I can build a, a ship facility. Yes, basically, that is correct. But you can build the small, medium, large first because those are the workhorses. Large and extra large is for fighting battles. Okay, it really is. Um, I haven't found a value in having an extra large freighter. And there is no such thing as an extra large miner. Uh, so it's really just fighting or it's freighters or auxiliary ships. And auxiliary ships are valuable, but that's for a different video. But uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, let it evolve. Let it grow. Watch its growth. Manage the growth. Move your resources. Optimize them. And when you're finally at a good place, build your first shipbuilding facility in that primary sector, specifically small, medium, large, with uh, repair facilities included. And at that point in stage, um, have some fun with that. And start prepping to put, build your first Freeport, then go to that other area, build that next base. You still got your small ships. You can start to give your big giant ships some fleet materials and you can start organizing your fleet. That's a different video, by the way. And all in all, I think you'll find um, what it teaches you is really, really awesome. It really teaches you how to manage and um, balance out your things. It also makes you very sharp. It reminds you of the processes you have to go through. And if you want a tip or two, here's my first one. One, when you follow your mission statements, in other words, uh, upkeep missions or other processes, don't make the mistake of just haphazardly going around and changing them. Instead, make the decision, okay, for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to go through all my bases and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z for every single one of them. I'm going to make sure they have all their resources. They need more ships. If there's an upkeep for a tug, whatever. Um, do them all at once for those set of tasks and then go back and then do the next thing in one set of tasks. 
What that does, it helps build your ability to be able to walk through methodical processes as you're going one, two, three to the end. So with that being said, I'm going to stop here. I hope this helped a little bit. I'll do another video or two later about like fleet management and so on like that. Uh, I'm not super powerful on the combat stuff. Um, I'm pretty decent on skill sets and, and the natures of how some of these things, you know, will spin up and do their things. Um, I don't necessarily want to go out and take over the, the universe. I did that once and I was like, eh, okay, now what? I realized I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So I said, well, I'm going to go back, get into, make it smaller, you know, get smarter, cleaner, leaner, faster, build it again, come in and then see if I can do it better with 30% less ships and stuff like that. That's the cool thing about this is it really does help you grow yourself. So hope you enjoy the game. Um, this is strictly an a, a X, X4 Foundation video uh, related to Interworld. Um, but it also helps me do my IT job as well. Well, this is Brad Dyke signing off. God bless and take care.